Hello YouTube, it is Champion DJK coming at you again with another weekly episode, of course, and I've got, you know, some fantastic things to show you. Um, we're going to get, you know, we're going to get right into it. It's going to be, there's going to be a lot of Johnny Lightning in this episode, which uh, is pretty cool. I actually got these from SC Diecast, my pals. I got them from them uh, already a month ago now, and now I'm just getting around to showing them. So I apologize about that. But we've got uh, from Classic Gold Collection, we've got the two 2000 Acura Integras, one in Nighthawk Black Pearl and the other in Clover Green Pearl. And these are from 2023 Release 1. That is like just coming out now. So Johnny Lightning seems to be still a bit behind, is what it appears. But uh, we have these two. So one in black, one in green. Pretty cool little casting. I don't think I had an example of this casting in my collection. So there we go. We got that. An Acura Integra Johnny Lightning. I also got the two. This is from the OK Used Cars. This is Muscle Cars 2023 Release 1. We got version A and version B of the 1980 Chevy Monte Carlo right here for you. So we're going to take a peek at these. Looking very nice. That's a newer tooling from Johnny Lightning. So it is actually kind of like a true 164 deal. So they're actually 164 scale, unlike older toolings of Johnny Lightning. So that is pretty neat. We're going to take a look at those. Limited to 3,508 pieces. So still somewhat limited. Uh, and then we have a Pontiac GTO. This is from the OK Used Car Series. This is one of 2,500 pieces. And this is 2023 release one as well. And it is version A in Nocturne Blue Poly. I think I have the version B car already. Pretty sure I do. And I'm pretty sure I've already opened it. <clears throat> I'm almost positive. And I think I got that from them as well, but just at a different time. So I don't know. There's that. And then we've got more from the Classic Gold series. I think these are both... Yeah, both of these are from, that's from 2023 release one, and so is this. So I actually got, you know, three out of the six cars in the series. This is the 1985 Ford Ranger XL. I love this tooling. I think it's fantastic. And we got both version A and version B here to open up and take a look at. This might be my favorite colors so far that have been released of it. The bright copper poly looks really cool, and so does this dark charcoal poly. I think looks really awesome. So I'm excited to open up these two. And then we've got another GTO. This is the 1966 Pontiac GTO, one in barrier blue and one in cameo ivory. Version A and version B, of course. Man, the blue one. Actually, both of these look really good. So Johnny Lightning puts out some great stuff. And especially if you start getting into the newer toolings and stuff, they're really good. They don't put out a ton of it. You know, they need to, I wish they could up the uh, new tooling development. That would be cool if they were putting out, you know, more new tools more often. Same with Auto World. That's, that's the one thing I wish that would happen. I get it. It's a small team of people at round two that have their hands full and have their hands in a lot of different uh, collector segments, so I get it, but very awesome. All right, then we got an Ultra Red, so into Auto World, we've got, this is from uh, uh, 2023 Release 4 for Auto World, version A and version B of the 2021 1500 Bighorn uh, Ram 1500 Bighorn North Edition, one in Patriot Blue and the other in... Diamonico, Delmonico, Delmonico, Delmonico Red. And we got the Ultra Red as well, the chase car. So we are going to open up all these. Again, you you guys know who this was from, right? You know who it was from. I don't even need to say it. But I guess. All right. <clears throat> Next. Uh, got a couple of things from Surplus Goodies. I picked up... Uh, this Tarmac Works Ferrari F40 LM. I still may get every version of this Ferrari F40 that comes out. 
I just might get it. I like the tooling. It's very nice. Uh, and, I mean, it's an F40. I love the car. So, and these racing liveries that it's coming out in are just so cool. So, this is the toe tip one. So, we'll go ahead and we'll open up that in the next segment. Very neat. Very cool. And then we've got a Kaido House Mini GT GTR. Uh, this is, is this the one that won the model of the year? I may have to look. <clears throat> I think it is. I think this is the one that won the model of the year for the Lamley work. Lamley, Lamley works. No. <laughs> Lamley group, uh, Instagram 64 car Royal Rumble. And, uh, I believe this is the car that won. This is the, uh, GTR R33 kind of works. And not necessarily that I, 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 I love Kaido house. And Kaido House has been like runner up to win like the last like two years in a row or something like that, or maybe even three. But I don't think this casting is as strong as those. So, but it won. It won this year, and that's who, you know, you guys voted for it. So, this is what we get. And we're going to go ahead and open up this. I'm pretty sure it was this particular one. This one is in uh, uh, purple. I think it was the purple one that, that won. If I'm wrong, somebody will correct me. Um, <clears throat> I didn't pay much attention to what color this was, but I thought it was I thought it was purple. All right. Then I bought an M2. Hey, I did. It happens every once in a while. I buy an M2 machines. It's not really a brand I, I collect too often, um, but I picked this up. I think I, I think I picked up a different one recently too, another M2. What's going on here? I got an S10 was the last one that I picked up. Well, I had to pick this up, even though it's Coca-Cola. And I, I like Pepsi. I'm not even a Coca-Cola fan. I prefer Pepsi and Mountain Dew. I don't really like Coca-Cola. And I don't really like Coca-Cola clad castings. I, Not my thing. I don't think, I think the soda thing with them too is, you know, it keeps me from buying a lot, actually, from trying out new toolings. But I saw this van today, and I decided to scoop it. <clears throat> So this is a new tooling from M2. I just didn't really want to wait for a plain Jane version to come out because I've done that with other castings that they've come out with. And sometimes it takes forever for them to just come out with a regular color. You have to buy a soda livery. So I did. I bought the Coca-Cola one. And actually, this looks really good. It looks, I think, really good. I think the whole, like the way, it looks good. I thumbs up to this Coca-Cola van. It does look like kind of like a delivery van. I think it's fitting and it's pretty awesome so far in the package. I really kind of eyed it up for any um, quality concerns. Don't see any. Not through the package anyway. We'll wait till we get it open and actually get a close up look at it. You know, I bought another M2 and a Coca-Cola one at that. So what's happening? I don't know. All right. <clears throat> anyway, moving on. Uh, then we got, I got a box from, you know, Jay. You know, he sends a box every week. He's been sending a box every week. And he usually sends me, sometimes he sends me a couple extra stuff that he's just like, you know, these were just extras I had. So do what you want with them. And he, and he included these two. So he had these two extra. It's a Nissan GTR and an Aston Martin Vantage GT8. And... He actually sent me this already once before. So, uh, truth be told, this is actually the third one I've got. Now, this, I've already found this one in the stores, too, and I already opened it up in a video. So, these two I got, and um, I'll end up kind of either paying for it. I think my buddy Todd might at least need the GTR. So, I'll probably hook him up with that, and we'll see if he needs the other one, too. And then he sent me uh, like the weird stuff, and that's the the part I really like when he when he sends me this weird stuff. So we've got this st racing champions street wheels dynamite die cast. Ten years of racing champions, nineteen eighty nine to nineteen ninety nine. So I'm going to say this came out in nineteen ninety nine. Pretty safe bet. Uh, this is like a Barracuda, uh, from what I can tell. I don't know if it actually tells you what it is on here. Maybe on the bottom of the car. It looks like a Cuda. Uh, the front end does. Uh, that thing. It's got a plastic base. Plastic. Just about the ugliest wheels you could ever put on a car. 
but it's interesting because it's just like a little Hot Wheels style card, like cheapo card, card, you know, car combination. So I don't know. We're going to open it up and check it out. So that's pretty neat. It's got, it's always cool seeing stuff like this. Cause I, you know, it's stuff I may not have looked twice at if I ever came across it, but then getting it and being able to open it and look at it and kind of like, is it good? Is it really bad? And you know, this might be really bad, but it might be okay. We'll find out when we open it up. All right. <clears throat> I love these actually. These are Ma Maisto design. Uh, these, you used to be able to find this stuff at, at Walmart. This is a 1965 Buick Riviera. You can still now find like the Maestro down. I think you can still find them. They come with like a car and a trailer or a car and a truck or something like that. They're on the trailer. Like kind of like a hitch and toe slash team transport kind of thing going on. <clears throat> but they used to be sold in singles at Walmart. Well, this one, I don't think was, this was Wherever, you, wherever this was originally purchased, it was $6.79, which is way more than they were selling these at Walmart. But this is a 1965 Buick Riviera in the Maisto Design Series, which some of these cars were really cool, actually. Um, and this one's pretty neat. So I've got a handful of these, and I don't know, I like them all. So we'll open that up. That's really neat. So in lieu of the majorette that Jay sent me, that I already have, we are going to open up some Majorette. I've got this Pink Slips Audi RS e-tron GT that I found a while ago that I haven't opened up yet. So we're going to go ahead and get that out of its package. And then I've got these two that I just found. Uh, Toyota GT86 in white and blue. Uh, Bill, Bilstein. Bilstein. I look at that word and I'm always confused at how to actually pronounce it. Um, and then this really actually odd looking Chevy Camaro. I don't know what's up with this Camaro. It just looks really weird. I think it's like, is this like the newest, newest, newest version of it? It only says Chevrolet Camaro on it. And the front end looks super goofy. I don't know if this is like the newest, like brand new Camaro. I'm not sure. You Camaro aficionados uh, will let me know in the comments, of course. So, uh, we went on long enough for this front half. I apologize about that. Let's go ahead and we're going to flip the camera around. We're going to look at some stuff up close. Going to try something different today because I'm about to axe the desk that I normally film the close-ups on. So, we're going to have to try something different. Hopefully it works out. Stay tuned. All right, <clears throat> we're going to try what we got going on here. I just hodgepodge this uh, little setup together. We're going to see how well it works. Uh, count on it probably every weekly video. We're going to be maybe changing it because I already don't know if I like this. The purple light in the background maybe is a little cheesy. I don't know. Whatever. It doesn't really matter. It's about the cars we're going to look at today. So let's go ahead and take a peek. And uh, should be a little bit easier than how I had it set up the one time where I, had a, I was having trouble... Uh, holding on to the cars. This is still a bit of a reach. You know, we'll figure out the perfect uh, formula at some point in time. But uh, it is what it is. All right. <clears throat> We're going to start with this uh, Tarmac Works Ferrari F40 LM. 24 hours of Le Mans. And I'm going to try to get it open and struggle as such with that. Let's, I should have peeled this before starting to film. And I'm so, why is it? This is like stronger than normal, hang on. I need to get it where I can get some leverage here. What is going on with this one? Jeez. All right, got it. Ferrari licensing. Right there in the bottom. It is an official Ferrari licensed product. Yes. Uh, IXO, I don't know if it's IXO that's got the, the license to do the LM cars or what it is, or if it's Tarmac or who does what, or who figures out um, what they need to do to do licensing for these cars. I have, I have no clue, uh, but they do have the license. So if that's something that you care about, it it is uh, factual here that they have it. All right, let's go ahead and, and open it up. Uh, they have put out quite a few of these Ferrari F40 LMs, and uh, it is in the Hobby 64 line, so they are numbered. This is 2924. Pretty cool there. 
Did I just knock something off of it? I hope not. That just fell right off. Um, see, I'm already struggling here. Trying to uh, figure out how to like... There's just nowhere to put your arm. When you're trying to like... It's like sleeping on your side here. We're going to go ahead and unscrew it from the base. So yeah, I swear that's not all we're going to talk about this whole time is, is trying to get a decent setup to film a diecast video because after all this time, um, I still haven't figured it out. And because you want to be able to really kind of focus on the car. So I try not to have like too busy of a background. And then you want to be able to be able to look close up at the vehicle, then trying to hold it steady while reaching your arms way out there and then trying to put your arms over where it's not covering the microphone. Ugh. It's just a complete struggle fest. See, I can't, the way that I have to, if I can anchor my hand here, and you can take a look at that. It's just so hard, see, shaking. It's because my arms are like fully stretched out. I swear it's not because I'm just like a shaky weirdo. It's just, a, it is what it is. Um, I will figure this out. <clears throat> One of these weeks, I'll figure it out. Kind of holding it like this is all right. I got my arm kind of wrapped around the microphone. I told you we weren't going to talk about that the whole time, and it looks like we are. Anyway, back to the car. The car looks really cool. Toe tip livery, not the best version of this so far, but still a neat one. And I really do think that I may end up just getting all of these. The nice thing about this setup is I have a lot more room. I can go just set that car in the background and it can chill there while we move on to the next uh, item. I can get this out of the way. This setup is probably going to work okay. I just need to uh, figure out where to put my arms. All right. Uh, Kaido House. This is the Nissan Skyline GTR R33 Kaido Works. We'll go ahead and open up that. And I did already peek at this model, full disclosure. I can't help it, but when I get a Kaido house, I have to open it up immediately because I want to see, you know, if there is a chase. Um, I don't know what the chances are of getting one out of there. I don't know if the hobby dealers know exactly where it is in the case or what they do. I've never pulled one. I've, got, I've bought a lot of them. I've never pulled one, but one day maybe I will. But here's the Kaido house. Pretty nifty here. You know, we can actually, let's try this once. This is going to be shaky for just a second, but we're going to, we can actually lower this a bit. I don't know if we want to do that. This might be too low. Let's try this. Let's adjust this to go more like that. And then you're just going to watch this totally be shaky. I apologize. And then let's try it. Let's try that. How's that look? Look decent? Maybe we can get the car closer to the camera without having to actually lift it up, which might be, I don't know, better. Uh, so this thing has an opening hood. It's got a very detailed engine underneath. Opens up about that far. Let's see if we can get you a close-up look at it. Pretty sweet. Snap shut, nice and satisfactory. And uh, very, very cool. It's in purple. Not my favorite Kaido house casting. It just isn't, you know. But it rolls like a mini GT. It's got those, like, alloy wheels. It's got the signature... Uh, I call this, like, oil slick in the parking lot. Kind of rainbow effect going on. And it looks really neat. Is it deservative model of the year? Um, for me, I'm going to say no. Okay. I'm not a hater of it. It's just not my favorite. I actually liked some versions of this guy better this year. So there you go. All right. We'll set that back there. Uh, let's get another hard to open packaging kind of out of the way. We're going to do this uh, Coca-Cola. M2. Maybe I can make, make my chair go higher. Um, you know, and if I'm smart, 
I don't, can't find the stupid lever for it. If I was smart, oh, I think it's up as high as it goes. If I was smart, I would uh, edit out all this crap, but, you know, sorry. I guess I'm not. Um, I can kind of do this, too. We can go, ooh, look at that. Coca-Cola. Kind of adjust this on the fly. This is going to be cool. So, yeah, I normally would never buy a Coca-Cola-themed M2. Or really a Coca-Cola-themed anything. Um, not even a Coca-Cola-themed soda, usually, because, like I said in the previous half, I'm, I'm more of a Pepsi guy myself. Uh, this one's limited to 9,250 pieces. Apparently there is a chase that's limited to 750 pieces worldwide. Um, I have to assume it's probably got like metallic red rims, but I really don't know what it is. But most of the Coca-Cola chases will have like Coke can metallic red as the, uh, the what have you, the rims and the trim. Comes, you know, blister packed like you would expect, and then it comes in the standard, like, kind of cheap old acrylic case, and of course, right after I get out of the package, I immediately notice a little bit of a flaw in the printing of Coca-Cola, but whatever, this van still looks pretty cool, let me go ahead and open it up, and unscrew it. I hate that these things have two screws. I wish it did the same thing as that Tarmac Works we just opened up and only had one. To me, that is a lot better than the two screw system. All right, set that over there. This thing rolls. Yeah, doing it on this table though is pretty neat. We got a lot more room for activities. Check it out. It's got a little bit of a lean to it. Not too disappointed by that, though. Not bad. And it looks like it's got a weird back piece here, which means they probably are going to do some weird different versions of the van in regards to that rear axle. We do have like an inserted detail for headlights. The grill piece is inserted. Uh, silver trim on everything. Uh, taillights, it's the real thing. It's 1971 on the plate, which is the year of the van. And overall, it's pretty neat. Another little paint flaw here in the back, where it looks like somebody just ran away with a brush there. Or I don't know. Oh, actually, is that chipping in the paint? Oh, yeah, look at that. Whoops. That's a slippage of the tool right there. That sucks. You know what? And we would have never saw that, right? Because it was in the package this way. So something happened here. Possibly when this thing was being screwed down. Or no, is it riveted in the back? There's one screw in the front. I'm tempted to take this thing apart, but we're not going to. And something went, you know, like when you slip with a, with a drill or something like that, went right across the side. Well, gosh darn it. And of course, it was in a spot I would have never seen it on. And that just is irritating, you know? <sighs> Whatever. Uh, it could be worse, and it has been worse when it comes to M2. So I guess I can't complain all that hard about it, but there you go. Uh, new tooling wise, is it cool? Yes, it is cool. Is it 164 scale? I don't know. Uh, I couldn't really tell you. It feels like it might be a little, it might be a little small. I don't know that for sure, but it feels like about the same size as the Johnny Lightning Chevy van that is very similar to this. And it seems like it's about that same size. And I would say that that one is a little bit small. So this one might be a little bit small as well. All right. Speaking of Johnny Lightning, let's get into that stuff. We've got uh, this guy here. This is your OK used cars. See, the problem with using the lens that I use on this iPhone is it has zero image stave. So when you try to uh, move... 
the camera, and you can see every little shake. All right, 1964 Pontiac GTO in Nocturne Blue Poly, and that is a dark, dark, dark blue. Open that up. One-handed like a boss. And set the car down. Get rid of this packaging. Uh, pro tip, you can recycle the cardboard on packaging, and you should do that because it's appropriate, right? Uh, the other thing is I save a lot of space in garbage by just stacking these blisters before I throw them in the garbage. Not that I'm that environmentally conscious, but I am taking the garbage out 100 times conscious. All right. You can kind of see the blue here. It's got a fingerprint on the top that's not from me. I think that's actually, that's permanent. Oh, uh, well, I've got somebody in uh, China's identity uh, hidden within the paint of this car. So if I find out who you are and you own an iPhone, I'm going to figure out a way to get in it. Or no, that doesn't even work now. They use FaceTime. What am I talking about? Uh, the computer still, the Macs still use uh, fingerprint data. Um, anyway, stupid joke. This, aside from the fingerprint, is a pretty nice looking little Johnny Lightning. The wheels on it are a little wonky. Um, that is fixable on these because they are not a, a wheel that is fixed to an axle. Look at that. You can see the iPhone in the hub of the wheel. Um, this tooling is a little bit older. It's from, well, I don't know when it's from because it doesn't tell you on the base, but it is tooling number 96. So it's got to be pretty old. The tooling's got to be pretty old. And I don't know. It's, uh, it's a good looking car. I think it looks all right. It's not the best uh, GTO casting from Johnny Lightning. And there are a lot of GTO castings to choose from. Um, but it is it is decent, and there it is in the, that that really really dark blue. Um, sticking with GTOs, and I guess sticking with blue ones. Let's go ahead and crack this one. This is the 1966 Pontiac GTO in barrier blue, and limited to 4,068 pieces. It is in 2023 release one. This is the version A, and this is a nicer GTO casting in quality. Um, we'll two-hand that one. And then uh, do our little thing where we put the cardboard on top, kind of keep things clean as we go. And check that guy out. Nice metal flake in the blue. Looks pretty good. Uh, this particular tooling does not... I don't think it does anyway. No, it does not. It does not have an opening hood, but that does not deter me from enjoying it. I don't care that it doesn't have an opening hood. It is a... This is 164-006JL. Hold up. Wow. I didn't. You know what? I didn't even know it. <laughs> and now I feel like an idiot. So they have a ton of GTO toolings, right? So I wouldn't have even thought about this. But... Yeah. This tooling, and I didn't realize it until we took a look at the numbers, and that's why I do that, is this tooling. This is the Auto World Deluxe version of this tooling. And I had totally forgot that this was that. Because Johnny has a similar GTO to this that is their own tooling. And that's why it says... 164-006JL, because it is 164-006, that's this tooling, and then the JL denotes the Johnny Lightning version of the tooling. Makes sense? Hopefully it does, it's pretty simple to understand, but <laughs> there you go, and I forgot that this was that. This is a really good looking um, deluxe auto world that's been converted into a Johnny Lightning. I think it's actually one of the best I've seen uh, get the rubber tire treatment because it looks fantastic, I got to tell you. And definitely in this color, it looks really, really good. All right, let's go ahead and put that there. And then we'll open up the one in uh, Cameo Ivory. 
we'll open up this one. The old claw. I'm gonna get an arthritic spine uh, doing this. We will figure it out one day. But you never know until you try to go a full video with it. Like you can't just kind of test it for a minute and then go. You got to kind of do a full video because you really don't feel the pain until you're like in a certain position for a certain period of time. All right, here this one in is is in white, and it's looking pretty decent. Um, fairly decent. We've got uh, it. I don't think it's as cool as the blue one. I don't think it looks quite as good, but it does look good in just your simple white with black rims and a black top. Not bad. And again, tooling number on the bottom. It rolls. It's a Johnny Lightning. Well, it's an Auto World tooling, really, with the Johnny Lightning treatment is what this is. And it looks pretty good. Uh, can we see there? Bah. Bah. Goat. Get it. All right. I'm going to go put that there. And move on to the next one. We've got a few more to get through here. We got uh, the 1980 Chevy Monte Carlo. This is in the OK Used Cars or Muscle Cars USA, uh, limited to 3,508 pieces. This is in white slash dark claret, which is like a uh, maroonish color, burgundy color. Poly. Open that guy up. And this is a newer Johnny Lightning tooling. Not one that used to be a deluxe. It's a newer Johnny Lightning tooling that is actually 164 scale. So these will have a 164 uh, thing there, and it'll be 164-0 uh, six two JL. But this was never used as an Auto World Deluxe tooling, just to be clear. Um, this one should have an opening hood because it is a new, I believe it does. It's a new tooling. Well, why aren't you opening up? So, by the way, the number on the bottom, it does open. I'm just not getting it right now. The number that it's 062. So that is actually in line with round two tool round two tooling numbers. So they go from one to whatever tooling that they're at now. But even if there's an auto world tooling, there could be an auto world tooling that's 063. Okay. If that makes sense to you. And then they have that JL just to determine what brand it is. And if it's auto world, it's not going to have letters after it. Uh, but this does look pretty cool. It looks nice. Uh, the color looks good. Um, looks pretty decent. So we're going to go set it back there and open up the one in light caramel. 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 However you prefer to say it. Polly. All right. And this one's got a black top. Looks really nice. And again, the same tooling number on the bottom, of course, because it is the same tooling. We got a wonky wheel on the back. That is something that is easily fixable. I just have to, well, I wouldn't call it easy. Sometimes it takes a little playing with. Giant Lightning wheels are kind of weird. They're three-piece wheels. Uh, you have like the back part that's actually attached to the axle, the tire, and then like the front part of the rim that is you know, meets the back part of the axle in the middle of the tire, and that's kind of how they're held on. This one's not rolling uh, because I, that wheel needs some attention. And again, I can fix that off camera. I don't need to bore you with it right now. But just believe me, it is fixable, and I will maybe fix it. Or I might just forget I ever saw it. Well, we'll see. All right, all right. We'll set that one over there by its buddy. Get the packaging out of the way, and let's get into the Integra. Uh, this is in Nighthawk Black Pearl. So I think one thing I'm noticing right away with this lighting, and I, I told you I wasn't going to talk about it, and I lied. This is version B, by the way. Um, is it's a little too 
specular. I think we need a little softer uh, type light. So I'll try something different the next time. We'll see if it's better. This is tooling number. It just says 047 on it. This is copyright date 2003 playing Mantis. So this tooling has been around uh, for quite a while. It rolls. That's my fingerprints on this, on it this time. Uh, the hood does not open. And we got, well, what's going on with the axle in the back? Look at that. It is broken. All right. So, yeah, I don't know what's up with that. Do we got uh, we got some actual issues here and I think this is actually I don't know what's going on there. I think maybe that side of the axle's not like clipped in. I don't know. Cuz the way they do this this shouldn't happen. Oh, it's like above the, I don't know. I don't even know if that's fixable. I wish it would stance the other side like that. Can we get that to happen? Yeah, sure we can. Let's just do that. There we go. Uh, pop the other side out. Can we get both of them in there? Sure we can. No, we can't. I'm going to work on that. Um, I'm going to tuck both wheels under because that's the, that's the way this thing should look, right? There, that's not too bad. That looks pretty decent. All right. Anyway, we got to move on to the next one. We got we to do that. All right. The next one is in uh, Clover Green Pearl. All right. So let's check this guy out. Clover Green Pearl. Uh, same tooling. Whose signature is that over there? I do not know. Card art's cool. Well, let's go ahead and open up this guy and see what we got. We got another, uh, see if we can stance this one a little bit as well. And I'm going to say we probably could. It does look like the stance is a little wonky. 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 <laughs> um, so this was kind of, I was, I'm going to say this, that with these, uh, older toolings from Johnny lightning that were like the import cars, they were kind of a little stance weird. And if I just push this down, we can get it to drop a little bit. It's still a little bit crooked. It's got a little bit of a lean to it, but it's not too bad. All right. Well, there's that. There's that Integra. It's cool. It's all right. It's an older tooling. Not as good as like the newer stuff, but it is pretty decent. All right. Uh, version A of this guy right here, the uh, Danger, Ford Ranger Danger. Or Danger Ranger, rather. In Dark Charcoal Poly. Oop. All right. Let's take a look at that. Let's crack it open. Drop the car, drop the truck. Get that out of the way. This looks really cool. I, I I really like the color combo. I like the color. I like the orange. I like the the red in this and that four by four little stripe across the side. I think it looks really awesome. I think this tooling's really cool. It is um, 63 JL. So 164-63 JL. You can see the production date code on this. This was actually produced in 222-23. I don't know why they, that hobby dealer, uh, SC Diecast, just got them recently, a year later. But uh, that's how it goes sometimes. I don't know if maybe you just end up scooping these up. And they were available for a long time, and I just haven't come across them. So I'm not really sure. So they probably did come out a little while ago. And it's just that it's me that's just getting them. But uh, this tooling has an opening hood, if we can get it there. And I will try real quick. If we can't get it on this one, we'll try it on the next one. All right, we'll try it on the next one. Let's go to V, B really quick. And then this one also has a flip down tailgate. That's easy to get. We'll do that. There's that. Pop it back up. And then 
grab that. This one's in bright copper poly. Very cool color for this as well. And the the uh, the rims are different on this one, and they look really neat. So here's your bright copper poly. Pretty nifty. So yeah, softer lighting, I think it's going to be the answer for these videos. Uh, maybe I'm not going to be able to get either one open. It's even harder to do the... Uh, Bang it on your finger trick. Well, I hate to do this, but sometimes it's the only way. There you go. There's your opening head. Decent. This truck's got a little bit of a wonky tire assembly as well. We'll fix that. And then here's the other one. Actually, now that I got them open, I thought the charcoal one was going to be my favorite, but it's not. It's this copper one. Hands down. It's super cool. Shiny copper. And uh, looking pretty good. All right. Moving on. Moving on. Moving on. Sticking with round two. We might as well do the auto world real quick. Uh, we got the Ram. This is version A of the 2021 Ram 1500 Bighorn North Edition. This is a brand new tooling from Auto World for this year. Uh, another big truck to join the other two. So they've got the Ford already. That was the first one to come out. Then the Chevy was the second. And now finally, Ram's getting some love. And that's what we got. So this uh, truck, I'm sure, will come out in all sorts of different trims. Um, this is the uh, North Edition or whatever it is. The Big Horn North Edition. It's got the Big Horn. Real loud beep beep on there. And uh, we'll open up the hood. Look at that. There's the Big Horn. I don't know what that is. It's like a Ram Air kind of thing up there. Air intake. Interesting. Gray interior. It's a good looking truck, I think. It looks all right. I'm going to say none of these modern trucks excite me, okay? I'm just not. There's just, you know, you see them all over the road, so it's cool. So if you probably know someone that has this truck or probably seen this truck actually out on the road. So that's kind of a neat factor, and it might be neat, you know, more neat even down the road when they're not seen as often, but, but it's pretty cool. I mean, it's really heavy. Metal on metal. Um, the tooling number is 72. And it looks good in that color. Let's check out the other color. The other color is uh, Delmonica Red, which is not ultra red. It's uh, actually quite far off from ultra red, I would say. Decent. Maroonish. Now, I have pointed this out a lot, and I'm going to continue to do it until it changes. And maybe it will never change, but you guys, come on now. The headlights. Interesting that the headlights are different. Are these different versions of the truck? Uh, they weren't, were they? They were all North Edition, right? Why are the headlights so different? So there's the headlight on that one. And I just, you know, can you do some, some sort of graphical representation of the headlight up here? You don't have to put, like, inserted headlights, but could you do that? I mean, is that difficult to do? I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't be able to do it myself, okay? So I'm not saying I could do it. I'm not, what I'm saying is, and yeah, see that? I just think it would serve Auto World better, and Johnny Lightning for that matter, for the newer toolings. It's fine, okay, it's fine. If you just have something small like this, I get it. Yeah, okay, I, that you can get away with. Um, this, yeah, I guess, you know, it's small enough, you can get away with it. When you get, when you get some big thing like this, it's, it needs more detail it needs like a graphical representation of like an illusion of it being an inserted headlight okay 
It just does, I, in my opinion. And so many other brands do it and do it pretty well. I would say Matchbox is like number one in that department. They have really good looking like tampoed headlights. I think they look really good. And then Hot Wheels does a great job of it, of course, as well. So you premium brands, if you're not going to throw... And I guess, yeah, I'm particularly just talking at uh, my buddies here at round two. We just opened up a chase car without even talking about it. But uh, I wish you guys would do it. You know, that's on my wish list for 2024. Is for you to add detail to the headlights. And I know this is sort of detail to the headlights, but it's not like you guys know what I'm talking about. I know you do. You just look at a uh, look at a look at a basic matchbox. You know what I'm talking about. Um, I think you could do a little better. But the nice thing is, is this actually answers my question, uh, because in this set or series, I was not sure whether the Ultra Reds followed the version A traits or the version B traits. And the headlights just answered that question for me uh, because none of the other cars, I don't think so far uh, you would be able to tell version A or version B what the cars are, what the cars keep the traits of because all this stuff is covered up. You've got, you know, red tires, you got white rims, you've got the ultra red body, of course, you got ultra red interior. So if there was an interior difference in color between the version A and version B, the ultra red trait would cover it up. Um, same thing with the rims were different uh, color. Uh, having them be white would cover that up. So I haven't been able to tell in any of the other Ultra Reds in this particular set. But now I know it's version A because of the headlight. However, now I'm going to be curious to see if there's any Ultra Reds out there with the same headlight as this truck. And what is the deal with them having different headlights to begin with. So that's a mystery now for me, and I may have to kind of explore that a little bit. I wonder if this was the old version of the headlight and they updated it to that, or what happened there? Because maybe there is ultra reds with the other headlight. Maybe there's maroon ones with the other headlight. Maybe there's blue ones with the same headlight as the maroon one. I don't know, but you can get a kind of a clue. It looks like the production date on the bottom is 8-30-2023, and that's actually shared on all three of these pieces. So this run was probably made in the same week, and there probably isn't different versions. It's probably all the Ultra Reds have this headlight on it, but who knows? I'll be looking. All right. That was nifty. That's fun. Um, what should we look at next? Well, I think we'll end, end it on Majorette. Let's do the, the weird things. This is a weird racing champions. We're kind of sticking with round two here, but this is prior to round two. Uh, having this racing or reviving the racing champions brand, I should say. This is from 19... Well, we know it's from 1999, right? Because 1989 is when racing champions started. And this is a 10-year anniversary. Uh, cheapo car. Street wheels. Take a ride on the wild side with Racing Champions' most outrageous collection of cars ever. Street wheels brought to you with with Hot Rod Magazine. Mm, it's a brand new toy collectible. It showcases the hottest car body styles of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. You'll find smoking street vehicles, crazy clown cars, crazy clown cars, beastly automobiles, and haunting hot rods. Presented at a price to please the collector and the kid, and all of us. Definitely presented at a price to please, right? Because this was probably a buck. And if it wasn't, it should have been. Um, yeah, they're trying to capture a little Hot Wheels energy with uh, this line of cars. Card size, plastic, metal. Overall, cheap feeling. This is actually more in line almost with a mice, though, as far as how it feels. And, uh, yeah, I think this is a CUDA, right? That front end. Oh, yeah, 70 Barracuda. <laughs> it is what it is, right? It's like Minnesota Vikings colors, blah. And uh, we got purple flames on yellow. 
well, purple flames into yellow flames into purple car. And those wheels, those throwing star wavy wheel things. I don't know. Maybe the kids of the 1999s were into these. Probably not. I doubt it. All right. There you go. That was probably a swing and miss, but it is what it is. All right. Here's this uh, 1965 Buick Riviera. We got some more flameage here. This looks a lot cooler. This is a uh, Maisto design again. And these are not true 164 scale. But they're kind of neat. They're kind of cool. Exaggerated features. You know, they're not true to scale, anything like that. This one's got a plastic base. It's screwed together. Uh, rubber tires, though. It's kind of a low rider. Not the best example of this I've ever had. Actually, kind of poorly put together here. We've got a uh, an issue right there. There we go. I'll pop that back in. Pop that back in. So the bumper is a separate piece that makes up like the headlight area. Outlaws. It's a, this guy's an outlaw, and uh, man, it rolls like super smoothly. Which is kind of odd. But uh, yeah. Maisto. Duke Riviera. Using her license. Maisto made in China. Screw together. You can take these things apart super easy. So if you wanted to customize some weird stuff. You could get these Maisto design. Tear them apart. Paint them up. Do some weird stuff with them. Without even uh, drilling them apart. Or having to tap them. Just screw them right back together. <laughs> Look at that. Not bad, kind of an odd gold color combination. It's like gold, like black into red into gold. It looks a little bit weird. There's a little bit of pearlescence to the gold. So it's a little weird, but uh, kind of cool. All right, moving on. Uh, next, or last, I should say, what we have is Majorette. And I swear, it's been almost every episode. that we have checked out a majorette or two and I don't mind it. Um, Audi RS e-tron GT. It's come with the little boxes. This one's got opening front. It's a, it's a electric car, so it's not going to have, an engine up there per se and then uh opening doors kind of a goofball design but i kind of like it it's got this weird like lime green top it's like gray with this black weird design i don't know i kind of like it i mean obviously i kind of like it i picked it up i bought it i brought it home so there you go audi on the front end uh, Majorette does that kind of cool thing. They don't do graphical design for their for their headlights, but what they do is uh, usually have it as part of the window piece, so it kind of gives it the uh, the feel of a inserted detail when it's really just part of the window piece. So that is that is kind of cool. I like when they do that. I think it's cool. Um, the other thing about Majorette is they they will have suspension from time to time. This one does actually majority of the time. They got a weird little axle system in here. Uh, the tires are rubber, the base is plastic, and uh, yeah, it's not bad. What do you guys think of that one? And then we've got, uh, I'll save the Camaro for last because it's really weird looking. This uh, Toyota GT86. Majorette. This is a Majorette, Majorette, not a Jada kind of designed Majorette, but still imported by Jada to the U.S., Found this guy at Walmart. Bill Stein. Or Steen? Stein. It's got to be Stein. Because I think you pronounce the second letter of the E and I combo when it's like German, right? Or something like that. So it's Stein. It'd be Bill Stein. Bill Stein. Bill Stein, not Bill Steen. So I'm pretty sure. You guys will, you guys will correct me. I'm sure of it. 
You want lots of engagement in a YouTube video, what you do is you just make a blatant mistake. And you will get lots of comments. I swear, people won't even read to see if someone already corrected you. They'll just pile on. Why not? And that's fine. I don't have no problem with it. Um, so here you go. Toilet, 86. Bill Stein. Bill Stein. And pretty cool. It's in uh, 158 scale. What was the scale of this car? This one was 163. I mean, just why not make it 164? What? Why? I think it's because they only have the one size of wheels. I bet you that's actually what it is. They only have... So, here's the deal. They only have, like, the one size of wheel. And I think now I just cracked the case. That's why they don't make the cars all different sizes. So, if they only produce this one size of wheel... I could be completely wrong, but we're going with it. Um, so if they only have one size of wheel, if they want the car to look anywhere proportionately correct, they have to change the size of the tooling that they design to fit around the size of the wheel. That's probably what it is. It's not actually the size of the pack. See, I always thought maybe it was like the size of the packaging. I'm sure that is part of it. They have to keep it within some sort of limitation to kind of fit inside the same size like outer blister which would be this guy here. But there's a lot of wiggle room in there. But I really think now it's because they have the same size wheel on every car. To get it to look proportionately correct to the wheel, they have to design the tooling to fit the wheel. Come on. That has to be it. It has to be. Uh, if you stuck around at the end of this video, please comment. Let me know what you think. All right. Uh, this ugly thing. What is it? It's a Camaro. It's a Chevy Camaro. Is this like the, like a concept for the new one? What is it? It looks really... The front end is just bothering me badly. And uh, it just it really is. Camaro to me, the Camaros, the new ones have been really like, I like it. I don't like it. I like it. I don't like it. Um, like the newer version that I've seen, I kind of, I kind of like it. I dig it. It's very aggressive looking. It looks kind of cool. And, uh, looking at whatever this is, if this is supposed to be what the newest, newest one's going to look like, I'm, I'm disappointed. I think it's back to being, in my opinion, ugly. And so, and again, you know, are these the same? They are. They are, dude. They, they're, I mean, they're very, very close. So they only have a couple different wheels that they use on these series and a couple different wheels in general for a majorette. And that has to be what changes the scale of the car. This is in uh, 164. So this one's actually, I guess, 164 scale. Um, it is... You know, and even though I thought it was really ugly, I had to pick it up just to even talk about how ugly it is. It's so ugly. The front end of this is so ugly. It, like, really, like, hurts me almost. I don't, I don't know what's going on. And this, this tooling has no opening part, which is a little bit weird. It's got to be a newer tooling. Is there like a copyright date on the bottom of this? So somebody that knows Majorette really well would probably be able to answer this. Maybe it was an old uh, like concept car for a Camaro that never was made. I, I honestly don't know, and I don't follow it enough, but I, I want to say it's probably like what the new Camaro is supposed to look like. And this is gross. It's disgusting. I don't like it at all. And I don't think it ever has a chance of growing on me unless they did just a really bad job of replicating it and it looks good in real life. Um, here's that. It's yellow. I like the yellow color on a Camaro. It's got the bumblebee thing going on, but bleh, it's gross. All right, that's going to be it for this episode. Thank you guys again for watching. Hopefully this camera situation looked okay and uh you know i'll review it and take a look at it and assess the situation and we'll probably do some other disaster in the next time so stay tuned for that because uh if anything that's going to be kind of fun um you know i'm always going to have some stuff to show you uh monthly meet would have been today if you're watching this today it was today 
even though I'm filming this on a Friday, we're going to publish it on a Saturday, yada, yada, yada. So I should have been able to pick up some stuff to show you, hopefully. Um, and we'll see you in the next one. So again, really appreciate you watching another long one. They always are. And uh, thank you guys very much. All right. Have a good one. Bye.